in the last video we saw how we can measure the distance to nearby stars using the notion of parallax. And the basic idea is, as the Earth orbits the Sun, if I have some nearby star, the position of that star in the sky will appear to change relative to very, very distant background stars. So from the perspective of Earth, if these are some uh, distant background stars, the star that's nearby will appear to trace out a circle in the sky over the course of a year. And based on the size of this circle, based on the angular distance from here to here, how far I have to tilt my telescope from looking at this point to this point, I have a very, very simple equation that relates that angle to the distance to that star. But what happens if this star isn't nicely situated directly above the solar system? What if it's off to the side? Well, let's, uh, let's make a picture of this. Let's say we have the, the sun here. So here's the sun. And I have uh, the orbit of the Earth. And rather than the star being directly above the solar system, let's say the, sun, the star that we're looking at is off to the side over here. Well, even though the star is off to the side, we can still measure a parallax angle. Let's say that this is the background set of background stars. At some point in the uh, orbit of the Earth, let's say the Earth is at this position over here. I look at this star and find out where it appears to be on my background, on my set of background stars. Six months later, the Earth will be over here, and then I can observe the star again. And now the star appears to be over here relative to the background. And what I'll notice is that as I, as I watch this uh, star move around in the sky, rather than tracing out uh, a circle like it did before, it'll actually trace out an ellipse. So if I have, you know, the picture of my background stars, picture of my background stars, before uh, the star that was nearby traced out a circle. But now, as uh, the Earth orbits the Sun, this star is going to trace out an ellipse. It's not going to be a circle, it's going to be an ellipse. And if I measure the distance, that angular distance from the center of this ellipse to the farthest point out, then this is again going to be my angle theta, and I can draw a right angle triangle. It's kind of hard to see the geometry, but that, would, that will be a right angle. And this angle in here will be my angle theta. So again, I can use this, uh, this same distance formula, even if the star isn't directly, directly above me. Let's take a look at the, uh, the extreme case. Let's say I have uh, the sun here and the orbit of the Earth. And let's say we take the extreme case where the star that I'm looking at is directly to the side of the solar system and here's going to be my background. Well again, at one point in the year, I can measure where this star is on the background. At, a, at six months later, I can measure where the star is on the background. And instead of drawing an ellipse, if it's right in the plane of the solar system, then I'll see this star just move back and forth along the same line relative to my set of background stars. So there are my background stars the star that I'm observing is just going to be moving back and forth. And I can still take half of this distance as my angle theta. So I can still measure this parallax angle no matter where the star is in the sky, just as long as the star is near enough that we can actually see this motion. Now, there are some other things, that, other interesting things that we can do. Let's go back to our original picture. We were assuming that this star was motionless. But what if we say that this star has some velocity, some velocity to the side? It's going in this direction. Well, in this case, if I look at my set of background stars, so here are my background stars, then if I look at the shape that this object, that this uh, foreground star will trace out, instead of drawing a circle, it's going to trace out some shape that looks something like this. It's kind of a kind of spirally moving shape. 
And the this shape comes from the fact that we have to combine the circular motion of the star relative to the background that we would expect due to our motion plus the motion due to the fact that it's moving. Because since this star is going to be moving to the side, as it moves, it's going to move compared to these to our line of sight to these background stars. So this spiral shape is a combination of the circular parallax shape that we would expect plus the proper motion of the star. So this comes from its proper motion. That is the motion of the star that we're observing relative to the solar system. So as we look at this uh, spiral motion, we can determine what combination of circular motion due to the, uh, due to the parallax and linear motion can be added together to make this shape. And by doing that, we can determine not only the parallax angle and thereby the distance to this star, but we can also learn about the motion of this star. How, what is its velocity in a direction tangential to our line of sight? And by that, I just mean that if the star is moving in this direction, we can use this method to uh, measure its velocity. But if the star is moving towards us or away from us, it's more difficult to do this and, and we can't really do it using this particular method. But even so, by observing these stars, we can learn a lot of information about how far away they are and we can learn something about their motion. Now, this seems like an ideal technique, but one of the things that I really want to emphasize is that these uh, parallax angles are incredibly small. We measure them in fractions of an arc second. And just for comparison, the size of an arc second is about the size of a quarter seen five kilometers away. So these angles are incredibly tiny and very, very difficult to measure. And the farther away an object is, the smaller this angle is going to be. So clearly there are going to be a lot of technical challenges with trying to measure angles that are so small. For instance, if we're uh, looking at some star from the ground, then the light from that star is necessarily going to have to pass through the atmosphere of the Earth. And the atmosphere of the Earth has all sorts of irregularities and disturbances and turbulences that will distort how we see this, uh, this star. It's the same effect that causes stars, when you look up at the night sky, it causes stars to twinkle. And this twinkling is very bad news when you're trying to extremely accurately measure the position of a star relative to these background stars. So from observations on the ground, we can really only measure uh, the distances of some of the most nearby stars before this twinkling effect makes it impossible for us to, to measure their distances. So the only way to really overcome this is to observe these stars from outside of our atmosphere, from space. So this leads us to a couple of satellite missions that were done. So in 1989, the Hipparchos satellite, Hipparchos satellite, which is uh, pictured here, was launched. And during its mission, which lasted until 1993, this satellite measured the parallax and therefore the distance to 100,000 different stars. So this mission was very successful and we gained a lot of information about our local neighborhood. But something to remember is that all of these stars were all located within about 500 parsecs of Earth. So 500 parsecs, which is about equal to 1600 light years. So if we were to kind of draw a picture of the of the Milky Way galaxy, so something like this, really crude representation of the Milky Way galaxy, I know. But if our sun was right about here, uh, that is about 8,000 parsecs away. If we can only measure stars 500 parsecs away, we're looking at an area about that size, probably even a little bit smaller than that. So this is a great method for looking at the stars in our local area. Now, currently, the European Space Agency is working on a new satellite called Gaia. Uh, and here's an artist kind of representation of this. And this is uh, planned on being launched next year in 2013. And this satellite 
will do the same thing, but will have a much higher sensitivity than the Hippocros satellite. In fact, it should be able to measure the parallax of one billion stars. So this is going to be extremely helpful for, for uh, understanding what the structure of our Milky Way galaxy is. And the distance limit on this is going to be closer to, instead of 1,600 light years, this is going to be closer to 30,000 light years. So that's a distance range on this diagram of about that size. It's just a little bit past the our galactic center. So even though this is uh, this is you know going to give us some very interesting science, it's still not possible for for this extremely high precision instrument to measure the parallax of objects that are outside of our galaxy. So this kind of shows us the limitations of parallax measurements and in order to measure more distant objects we're going to need to look at different, uh, different techniques in the cosmic distance ladder.